Today we're brewing an IPA and we're doing it in a bit of a hurry. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna brew this beer in five days. We have a little party coming up and it's for what day is it gonna be? My birthday! <laughs> yeah. Good job, Zoe! Give me five. Yeah! <laughs> So yeah, we are going to try and brew an IPA in five days. Needs must, right? Mm -hmm. We've got to yes. be ready for this party. So let's treat the, the water first of all. For water salts, I'm going to use a ratio of two to one for sulfate to chloride to try and sort of enhance the bitterness of this beer. So in here, I have got some water salts. Lauren, could you just uh, add some water into that? Okay. So for my water chemistry, what I've got in here is four grams each of Epsom salt, calcium chloride, and gypsum. Now, because the grist is quite light, we're gonna need to add some lactic acid. Um, I think I need about six milliliters of lactic acid. So maybe I'll do this as you've got gloves on. Yeah, I can lift it and you can pour yeah. it. Yeah, three milliliters, six. We bring a, a full five gallon batch today, so it's a bit more grain than I usually use. So what I've got in here is a combination of Maris, Arta and Munich 2. So looking for an original gravity here of 1061, it's gonna be around a 6.5% beer, although we'll see about that because there's an efficiency issue to talk about in a moment. But in terms of what the uh, the combination is, it's 70% Maris Arta and then 30% Munich 2. And that will hopefully give us a nice sort of slightly biscuity base, which will be a good contrast for the hops. Looks like you're struggling there. I mean, no, I'm fine. You got it? That's good. You want to check for lumps? I don't know. <laughs> I think the gloves are also making it difficult. So here's, here's the plan. Everything is going to be fast, so mm -hmm. quick brew day, right? Yes. We're going to do a 30 minute mash. When 30 minutes is up, it's done. Then we're going to move to a boil. Just going to do a 30 minute boil. And then we're going to move into this sort of five day fermentation thing. All right, so we're going to leave this mashing. Okay. 30 minutes. Sounds good. See you back here then. And uh, we'll move on to the boil. Sounds good. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes. Normally mash for 60, but we have no time for that. You got a glove on too. Okay, I'll pick you up and then we'll tell mommy what she needs to do. So we need to take a gravity sample so we can see how far we've mashed. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna drop it in here. I would say that is about 105.3. The expected pre-boil gravity was 10.53. For this beer, we're actually going to be using a couple of different hops. Uh, starting off at the start of our boil, we're going to be using CTZ. After that, um, I was looking for more of like a citrusy, fruity kind of hop for the beer. Um, so I'm not going to butcher this name, but I'm going to butcher this name. What? Waititi? Waititi? I don't know. And El Dorado. We'll give it more of a like a citrusy, candy-like, maybe pear, limey. I I'm I'm not too sure what it's going to be, but I'm very excited because I think it's the flavor that I'm going to be looking for. Now, incidentally, the way I was able to hit my pre-boiled gravity numbers, despite only mashing for 30 minutes, is I lowered my expected efficiency. So normally with this system, I'll see a brew house efficiency around 68%, and I lowered it for 62% because I'm mashing for less time, and yeah, that seemed to be about right.
original gravity came out at 1060, so pretty much what I was shooting for. Now, let's talk about how I'm gonna get this beer ready five days from now. Well, I'm gonna be using this yeast here. This is Voskvike yeast. It does give some orangey citrus tones, which is in line with the style that we're looking for, but more importantly, it ferments super, super fast. So this has a temperature range of between 72 and 98 Fahrenheit, and typically the warmer you ferment, the quicker it's gonna get done. So I'm gonna push this to sort of 95, 96 degrees during fermentation, and I'm expecting it to complete in about three days. The work right now is at 88 Fahrenheit. It seems kind of crazy to be pitching yeast at those sort of temperatures. So there you go, yeast. Time to get to work, guys. Now I have a few more tricks up my sleeve to get this beer ready in time. But for now, I'm going to be using the heat blanket uh, that's built into this system to keep this at 95 Fahrenheit. And I will see you in three days for the next step. It's day three now and fermentation, well, it's been quite remarkable. I added the yeast in and then within maybe two hours there was decent airlock activity and by the next day it was like a volcano coming out of the airlock here. Uh, looking at it now it's kind of slowed down a bit so we're approaching the end of fermentation which is pretty remarkable considering it's been less than 24 hours but now is when I'm going to add my dry hops. I have two of these same hops that I added in near the end of the boil. And I like to add my dry hop charge just before fermentation has ended because any oxygen that I introduce when I open up this port here is just going to get consumed by the yeast as it finishes up fermentation. By day four, all airlock activity had ceased, so I chilled the beer to 38 Fahrenheit. Once it reached that temperature, I brought out my carbonation stone and then hooked it up to the gas and set my PSI to about 14, where I left it for 24 hours. A day later, I kegged the beer and the final gravity came out to around 110, ready for tasting. Well, it's been a tough week, five whole days. Five whole days. Well, the beer's been busy. It's like done. I mean, the thing did fully ferment. It uh, looks like a beer, would you not say? I, I would say, it definitely looks like a beer. Um, it, now it's a bit hazy. Is it? It's not meant to be hazy though, right? Yeah, so I think that is a product of the fact that it's just not had time to settle. So okay. It's been cold crashed for two days and I didn't add any clarifying agents or anything. So it just needs a bit longer gotcha. for that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, just in terms of color, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, when you poured it out the tap, it was really carbonated. Yeah, it was carbonated. It looked really nice coming out. I wondered if we were really gonna get much of an aroma because the hops didn't spend an awful lot of time mm -hmm. in the beer, but smells quite tropical, mm. um, quite summery. Okay, well, the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> Let's try our five day old beer. Yeah. So it tastes like beer. That alone <laughs> is something like it's, if it, if the fermentation was caught uh, short, if it was, hadn't completed, it would taste mm. too sweet. I might have a lot of off flavors. I'm not getting anything like that. So yeah, I think this, two distinct tastes that I'm picking up on. Mm -hmm. One is the maltiness of the beer mm -hmm. is, is quite apparent. And the second is some of those hop aromas that we're picking up on yeah. and getting in the taste as well. And more from the fruity side again, rather than just sort of general hop bitterness. Yeah. I, I definitely have a little bit of hop bitterness mm. that's mm -hmm. there though. And it's remarkable that this is a drinkable beer already. In five days. In, in five days. In five days. Well, I think we quite like it. Yeah, no, for sure. The question is, 
what the party guests think. Oh, that is true. Well, we will have to find out and see what they think. So tell me what Probably. you think of the beer. It's the good. beer is amazing. It's definitely a fruity undertone for sure. It's a smooth start, but it's a, it's a, a, a hearty finish. I put down my margarita to drink this and I'm on my second glass. <laughs> and I love margaritas. Ha, ha, ha.